Okay, let me start the recording. Um, the the conversion of the lecture file just ended, and yesterday it never ended before I started the second meeting. And because I started the Zoom when the conversion was going, it stopped the conversion. And then I had to figure out some way to get it converted, and it was just a hassle. So I might be a little bit late getting to the uh, second meeting here because uh, I'm going to want to have that first meeting converted. And it takes about 15 minutes to convert uh, our first meeting, uh, meaning if I don't stop right away, I won't have enough time to get it converted. Uh, anyways, just to let you know that uh, uh, it was converted and I was able to start this meeting on time. In the future, I might try to start end the meeting a little bit early just so I have enough time to get that converted because I don't want to have a recording for the students who aren't able to uh, be here live. All right, are there any questions? If not, let me go ahead and do the screen share. I guess I can close that. Are you seeing the screen? You should be seeing the screen. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, cover Lab 3, the Microscope Basics. And you should have read textbook chapter 3 through the end of section on the compound light microscope. If you haven't done that, you will need to do that probably before you uh, begin working actively on lab 3. And don't forget, you have to take quiz 1 by 11.59 p.m. on Friday. And you have to be finished at 11.59 p.m. Because if you're taking the quiz and you're like halfway through it at 11.59 p.m., it will time out. All right, so be finished by 11.59 p.m. Any questions about what we're doing? If not, I'm going to close that. And uh, go to the lab, which I've got right here. All right, lab module three, microscope basics. Uh, you should note the microscopes are extremely expensive and easily damaged, and therefore their use uh, requires a specific care. So follow the instructions carefully, and you're going to be in a virtual lab, so you won't actually be working with microscopes, but you will be working with microscopes virtually, if you understand what I'm talking about. Can I get that over there? Yes. Oops, too far. So you should do the pre-reading and learn the primary learning objectives. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, there will be video clips and online exercises for you to do. So let's begin with the introduction. Microscopes are an important tool for any microbiologist to be successful at viewing bacteria, which are very small. You have to have good technique when using the microscope. And you should memorize the name and function of the following parts of the microscope. So this is showing you a picture of the microscope with the parts numbered. And you should really know all of these parts we have here. You should know the ocular lens, the objective lenses, the mechanical stage, this mechanical stage clips, the mechanical stage control, which moves the specimen on the uh, slide. And there's the mechanical stage control right there. You should know the iris diaphragm and understand that it is uh, probably the most important part of the microscope for controlling the light on the microscope. You, there is the condenser which focuses the light. You should know the coarse foc adjustment knob and the fine focus adjustment knob. You should know the power and the light switch. Uh, and then that turns on the illuminator or the lamp or the bulb. 
uh, and then the light intensity dial, that's the rheostat, that turns on how high the lamp is showing. Any questions about any of those parts of the microscope? You should know this table, you should know the names of the microscope. Uh, when we're talking about the low power lens, it's not the lowest. The scanning lens, the 4x objective, is the lowest. We call that the scanning lens. And then the highest is not the high power lens, it's the oil immersion lens, which magnifies 100 times. So you should know the power of each objective lens and the total magnification. Our ocular lenses are 10x, and the total magnification is multiplying the magnification of the objective lens by the magnification of the ocular, and all of our microscopes have 10x ocular. And so the magnification is just 10 times whatever the objective lens is. And so the total magnification will be 40x for the 4x lens, 100x for the 10x op objective, 400x for the 40x, and 1000x for the 100x uh, objective lens. And today is Wednesday, so I can state it. We do not have the best microscopes. If you had the best microscopes, you would have an ocular lens that could magnify 20 times. Okay. You should also know the uh, table, the depth of field, the field of view, and then the comments about that. With the depth of field, you should know that the scanning lens, the 4x objective, has the deepest depth of field so that you can see the most area. And then as you go up in power, the depth of field decreases so that when you're at the oil immersion lens, the 100x objective, uh, you have a very narrow depth of field that you can see. And that's important if you're trying to see a three-dimensional object and get a basis for what it looks like. The 4x lens will show you all of the object from the top to the bottom. And then you go on a higher objective, you won't see all of the object, you'll just see a specimen, a slice through that object, okay? And as you go up in power, you get a smaller depth of field. Now with the field of view, that's how much of the slide you can see under the microscope. And the 4x objective, try and get both hands in there, the 4x objective has the biggest field of view, so you can see more of the slide with the 4x lens than you can with any other objective lens. And as you go up in power, the objective lens reduces the field of view until you're at the 100x objective where you're only seeing a sliver of the field of view that you saw with the 4x objective. Any questions about that? On the comments, the scanning lens or the 4x objective is the easiest lens to use because it's giving you the largest field of view, get both hands in there, and the biggest depth of field. And then the 100x objective is the hardest to use because it's giving you the smallest field of view and the narrowest depth of field. Any question about that? Now, when you see an object under the microscope, it will be magnified, but not only is it magnified, it's also inverted. <laughs> so there we go, my hand there. Inverted, and then it's reversed, so instead of being right-handed, it would be left-handed. So when you're looking at the E here, excuse me, the E here, It'll be inverted and reversed, all right, and magnified. Any question about that? Another thing when you're using the microscope, when you move the slide right, 
the image will move to the left and vice versa. important because you're not working with actual microscopes. Uh, you should know a little bit about the iris diaphragm. It is hooked together with the condenser, so they're together on the microscope. Let me show you a picture there. So six is the, actually that's the lever. So uh, seven is the condenser, and six is showing you the lever of the iris diaphragm. So the iris diaphragm will be right above the condenser, so right there. They're together on the microscope. Um, where do I have that information? There we go. The iris diaphragm uh is probably the most important tool you have for adjusting the light on the microscope generally when you're starting you should be starting with the 4x objective lens and the iris diaphragm should be fairly open but as you go up in power with the objective lens you need to shut down that iris diaphragm so that with the iris diaphragm you're shutting the cone of light coming from the condenser so that the cone of light will be open about to the field of view for the objective lens. And so with the 4x objective, you have the biggest field of view, so you should have the iris diaphragm open the biggest. And as you go up and power objective lenses, you start reducing the iris diaphragm and you reduce it to about your field of view under the uh, uh, objective lens. Any question about that? So it's really important that when you go up in power on a microscope that you reduce that iris diaphragm. Uh, otherwise you don't get uh, maximum um, what is that called? Maximum, um, not focus, maximum... Uh, contrast? Say again? Contrast? Contrast? No, contrast. Uh, maximum illumination. Okay. Maximum, um, not condenser, contrast, no. We'll just say illuminate, illumination. Uh, Anyways, that's how you use the iris diaphragm. You will be only using that virtually in this lab because you won't actually be working with a real microscope, but we have a virtual microscope for you to use. When you're first using with a microscope, you should start with the 4X objective because it's the easiest to use and it has the wide, widest field of view and the largest depth of uh, focus. Obviously, turn on the light, put the 4x objective lens in place, uh, bring the object using the mechanical stage control knob so that the, the specimen is in the middle of the light source, so it's in your field of view. And then when you're focusing, start using the coarse focus adjustment knob bring your specimen into the middle of your field of view and get it in focus with the coarse adjustment knob. And what you'll do is, if the uh, uh, stage is all the way down, use your coarse focus knob to bring the stage up to bring your specimen into focus. And then get your specimen in as good a focus as you can with the coarse focus adjustment knob and then switch to the fine focus knob to bring it in perfect focused. Once you've switched to using the fine focus knob, 
do not ever go back and use the coarse focus knob because if you do you will bring the specimen out of focus out of the field of view out of focus so only use your fine focus knob and so for all other objective lenses you shouldn't be using the coarse focus knob you should only be using the fine focus knob you only use the coarse focus when you have the specimen under the 4x objective lens and then once you get it in focus only use the fine focus and this is because the microscopes we have in the lab are parafocal and that means when you rotate one objective to the next objective lens they should be in focus and they won't be in perfect focus but you only need to adjust the fine focus a little bit and then they will be in perfect focus. Any question about that? Okay. So once you have your specimen in focus with the 4X lens, bring the specimen into the center of your field of view before going up to the next higher power objective lens. And why you do that is the 4X lens has a big field of view. So if your specimen is over on the side of the field of view, and then you go up to the next objective, it has a smaller field of view, and so the specimen may be outside of the field of view. So you bring the specimen into the center of your field of view before you go up to the next higher objective lens. Okay? And then just use the fine focus, bring the specimen to the center of your field of view, and then go up to the next higher uh, objective lens. Any question about that? And you just repeat that procedure each time you want to go up to a higher objective lens. So that's repeat step nine when you're switching from one objective to the next higher objective lens. Now when you're going up to the last lens, the 100x oil immersion lens, there's a special procedure for using that lens. This lens only works well, I guess I should word it that way, when you use oil. If you don't use oil with the 100x lens, the magnification is not any better than when using the 40x lens. And the 40x lens is easier to use when you're using the 100x lens without oil. Did I say that right? So use the 40x lens without oil. And then if you want higher magnification, use the 100x lens with oil. There's no reason to use the 100X lens without oil. If without oil, just use the 40X lens. Anyways, when you want to use the 100X lens, rotate the 40X lens halfway out of the cycle, but don't click in the 100X lens. So meaning that the lenses are uh, halfway off of the specimen. We'll word it that way. So the 40X lens is halfway off, and the 100X lens is halfway off, and then nothing's on the specimen. And then you can get your oil container to the specimen and add a single drop of oil right over the specimen. Okay? And then bring the 100X lens in that drop of oil. It should be uh, already in focus so that 100x lens will be so close to the specimen that the 100x lens will touch the drop of oil. The uh, oil should not touch the other objectives and this is important because if you rotate your lenses when you have a drop of oil on the specimen the 40x lens is close enough to the specimen they, it will go through the oil and touch it, and then you'll have to clean the 40X lens with 
the oil off the 40x lens as well as off the 100x lens. Um, is that clear? The reason for using oil is that oil has the same refractive index as glass and so when the light is moving through the glass of your specimen and then through the oil and then through the glass of the 100x oil immersion lens the light will not be refracted and so more of the light will be going through the specimen and then not being refracted will go into the lens. If you don't have the oil there, the oil will be refracted out of the glass and then going into the, the, uh, the air and then going into the lens, it'll be refracted between the air and the lens again. And whenever light changes medium, with the exception of when it's oil, because oil and glass have the same refractive index. Whenever light changes medium from glass to oil, it refracts. And where it refracts at the change in the media, the light beam coming through uh, will bend. And so some of it will go into the objective lens, but at this change in the media, some of it will be bent and will go at a different angle and the one going at the different angle will not go up to the objective lens. And so that's why if you use oil, there's no refraction and the light beam will go straight from the glass to the oil, from the oil to the glass of the lens. And so more light will be going up to the lens. And that's why we use oil that uh, improves the resolution. That's the word I wanted to say. Because you're getting more light coming into the lens, you're improving the resolution of the specimen. Okay? And that's why we use oil with the 100x immersion objective to improve the resolution. And then once you put the lens in the oil, only focus with fine focus. When you're now finished with the microscope, you've used oil, so you have to remove oil from the 100x lens. You should also check the 40x lens in case oil accidentally got on the 40x lens. Uh, the 40x lens should not be exposed to oil. But it should be checked because if you rotate it through the oil, it'll pick up oil. Okay? Uh, there's a few troubleshooting steps. I'll let you guys read through that in the lab and the in the activity when you're doing the lab. Uh, for activity one, you're not actually going to be performing this activity because everything will be done virtually. However, you are expected to know the information contained in the table below for this activity. So you should read through activity one and understand it. It's measuring the size of the field of view for each of the objective lenses. So with the 4X objective lens, you have a field of view of 4.5 millimeters or that would be 4,500 micrometers. For the 10X objective, you've got a field of view of 1.8 millimeters. For the 40X objective, you've got a field of view of 0.45 millimeters. And for the oil immersion lens, you've got a field of view of 0.18 millimeters. Okay? And then use this table to answer the questions uh, for the lab. You won't be doing activity two also, but you do need to understand this activity and understand the parts of it, so read through it. You will be doing a virtual exercise at the end, which will be similar to this activity, but we, we hope you will understand the material in this exercise. 
and that's observing a specimen on a prepared slide. All right, any question about activity two? Uh, and then activity three, you don't need to read it because you're not going to be tested on it and you're not going to be actually doing this. It's talking about how you make a wet mount. Uh, wet mount is a specimen inside of a, a liquid. Like when you take pond water and you look at it under a slide, that would be a wet mount. And in a wet mount, you can actually see live organisms in their natural in, in environment. Like when you put a drop of pond water on your slide, and then you add a cover slip to the slide, and then you look at it as a wet mount under the microscope. All right, I don't see that there. Is that the next activity? All right. So, uh, is that for making a wet mount? Yeah, that's activity three, so you don't need to go through that. Uh, go ahead and do the online activities. We have uh, a little video on uh, how to use a microscope and a video on how to add oil to the uh, uh, 100x objective lens when you're looking at a specimen using oil. And then uh, go through the virtual microscope by clicking this link and it has an activity for you to do virtually using a virtual microscope. And you should know the different parts of the microscope and we've got microscope labeling. It's pretty much the same picture as we had above. You should know the terms of a microscope and then answer the study questions, which I have in the worksheet. And I think it's just called worksheet, oops, wrong one. It's called worksheet to lab three. So go ahead and uh, answer the questions on the worksheet to lab three. Oops, that's the answers. Don't want to show you that. And uh, submit your, uh, your worksheet in the folder in Canvas. All right, any questions? If not, go ahead and start working on the lab, read through it, watch the videos. I will be here until, I already closed it down, whenever the lab ends. So I'll be here to help you uh, with any questions you have in the lab. All right? So go ahead and get started. I'm going to stop the screen share and stop recording.